Brothers and sisters, it is time to vote. All those in favor of moving on, say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. No. I think that the vote speaks for itself. Brothers and sisters, our Father in heaven knows our plight. And if we are faithful, he will protect us. We will move on. Brethren, brethren and sisters, what I have said I know to be true. But seeing that you are to go forth, I will go with you. I will help you all that I can. I will work with you. I will rest with you. I will suffer with you. And if necessary, I will die with you. First, I want to tell you what a good and faithful man my husband Aaron is. He truly has been my strength and my family's strength all through this difficult journey. It was at the last crossing of the Platte at Bessemer Bend that I could see this spiritual giant of a husband of mine was dangerously failing physically. I brought our little ones through that horribly cold river. My Aaron had not the strength and he was so humiliated and humbled when my sister Mary and I were forced to carry him across at last. That night, I could see he was still sinking and his condition now became even more serious. I tried but failed to get him to eat. He seemed to rest easy and fell to sleep quickly. I retired at nine o'clock and I believe I slept till about midnight. I awoke to hear if he still breathed. He lay so still. I put my hand upon his face. And to my horror, my worst fears were confirmed. My husband was dead, cold and stiff, rigid in the arms of death. I remained beside him through the long, almost Egyptian darkness. Of course, I did not sleep. And oh, how those dreary hours drew long. When morning came, they wrapped him in a blanket, along with 13 others. The ground was too frozen to dig a grave, so they covered them with snow. He was left there to sleep until the trump of the Lord shall sound, and we shall unite our hearts and lives for eternity. Several days after the death of her husband and many more. There weren't enough men to set up the poles for the tents. As a result, Elizabeth and her children made their beds by the fire with nothing over their heads but the vault of heaven. In such adverse circumstances, several inches of snow on the ground and bitter cold you can imagine how she felt thousands of miles from home, three fatherless children, nothing to protect them from the elements. But the Lord blessed her, you see. Her husband Aaron came and visited her and assured her that everything was well with him and the deliverance for the company was at hand. Elizabeth, 
Mary, Aaron came to me, Mary. No, sister, Aaron died, remember? <laughs> yes, yes I know, but he came to me. He was standing right beside me. He looked so happy, so much at peace. Now I know our family can be together again after we die. He spoke to me, Mary. It was really, Elizabeth, a gift from our Heavenly Father to let you know that families are eternal. Aaron really is all right. There's something else that's wonderful too, Mary. He said, Elizabeth, deliverance is at hand. Mary, help is on the way. Oh, could it be? Pray that it is so. What? Oh, oh, they're here! Oh, oh, they're here! Oh. Who's here? Who's the rescue here? party from the valley? They're here! They're here! They're here. They're here. It looks like Heavenly Father heard your prayer. I have prayers, Mother. I knew he would. It was the 28th of October. You cannot imagine the joy we felt that day when we saw those men from the valley. It was as, it was as if a great weight had been lifted from our shoulders. Our hearts were full that night as we gathered around in prayer to give thanks to our Father in Heaven. But the ordeal was far from over. We'd traveled only 10 miles in the last week. Many were dying and many more would yet die. We had hope. Few of us realized that although we had traveled a long distance from Iowa City, it was still a difficult trail to the valley. Still, we had faith. Two days later, we met the main body of rescuers with their wagons and more food and provisions. At that point, over a hundred of our company were unable to walk and there were deaths each day. On November the 2nd, we reached Devil's Gate, a small fort where we could get some shelter from the weather while we waited for the hunt and the Hodget wagon parties to catch up. Turns out the fort was too small for all of us so it was decided to move us to a cove about three miles farther on where we could be more sheltered from the weather. November the 4th, dawn cold and clear, but we all thought we could make it three miles. We struggled and finally found, made it to the Sweetwater River, a distance of only one mile. But in our weakened condition, weather below zero, it seemed more like 20. <coughs> and, and, there's a river up ahead. I don't know if I have the strength to pull us through it. I'll walk. That will lighten the load. No. <coughs> no. You must stay warm and save the baby. I'll make it somehow. Come on, Sister Jackson. Alan here will take your son and I'll carry you across. You won't even get your feet wet. Oh, Brother Grant. I just can't. It's too hard. I'd consider it an honor. 
Come on, Squirt. Let's go for a ride. The rest of you wait there. We'll be back for you in the cart later. We'll be fine. <sighs> oh, are you all right? <laughs> it's not nearly as cold as the first time across. Oh, bless you. Bless you. You'll have to move faster than that if you want to keep your toes warm. Watch out for the ice. It's breaking loose. It's big enough to break a leg. Leg? What leg? I can't feel anything below my knees. Well, it can't be that cold now. The ice is breaking up. Brother Webster, get in the car with your wife. Steve and I will please. I think us. I can make it. You know, David, I've heard the Irish are stubborn and the Scots are ornery, but I think the English take the cake. When was the last time you had a bath? What? When was the last time you washed your feet? My feet? I don't remember. That's what I thought. This here's the Sweetwater River. If you think I'm going to let you put your muddy feet in this pristine clear stream, why you got another thing coming? You'd muddy clear up to the Missouri. Now get in that car with your wife before I throw you in there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I was up on the South Pass. That snow whirling around my head. Y'all know about that snow that's been blowing around out there. Well, the other night, I said to myself, Ephraim, it sure would be nice to have a nice buffalo hike snuggle up into the keep warm and some fresh meat to eat. So I kneeled down and I asked the Lord to send me a buffalo. Right after that prayer, I opened my eyes and within 50 yards of my camp was a big fat buffalo. He even waited like I got my rifle so I could bring him down without a chase. Just like that, he waited? <laughs> yeah, just like that, he waited. That old buffalo didn't know what he was waiting for, but the Lord knew. And that buffalo entered the cult, so to speak. Right down with one shot, skinned him out. It's like I had that buffalo rope key. You can see why I wanted it now. You know, I passed this country many a time. I don't ever reckon to call some buffalo this far north at this time of year. That's why I said it's a miracle. The word's kind of a miracle. How did you find us? Well, you see, after I lost that buffalo on me, my horse. I started heading east all the time. I know he's out here somewhere. Thought I might have to spend another night in my buffalo roll. But I kept prodding along. Knew that meat wasn't going to spoil. Fact is, it froze solid to my horse. <laughs> kept searching for any sign of it. And then I found a ridge. I spotted a little black streak in the snow. It seemed to be moving. I know in my heart what it was. I pushed on harder, and here I am. Oh, Brother Hanks, how can we ever thank you enough? Lord deserves the thanks, ma'am. We sure were glad you came when you did. Yes. I might have dressed like I heard what I did, too. But I just didn't happen long. The Lord sent me. Seems that since I was a boy, the Lord's always been willing to keep in touch with me, if I'll keep in touch with him. Another thing I noticed, he always counts on folks to help him out. He told me to come, I did. You make it sound so simple, Brother Hanks, but I have a feeling it was more heroic than that. Ah, ain't no hero. Hey, that buffalo means sticking your ribs up to celebrate. Maybe singing some songs? Yes, I'd love to sing a song. How about Bobo Lob Black? Sisters, the Lord has blessed us so much today. It is true that we still have such a difficult journey ahead of us before we get to the valley, but will you kneel with me, please? And thank you for these wondrous gifts of blankets and shoes and food and hope. Our most wondrous Father in heaven. So grateful are we to this day for thy bounteous goodness.
Sister's crook. You look as though you could use a hand. Oh, thank you, Brother John. I'm through now. Would you please take Eliza to the valley? Mother, I'm not leaving you. Come along, Sister Sophia. There's plenty of room in the valley for all of us. And besides, I understand that President Young himself is looking forward to a slice of your famous blueberry pie. I can't pull the cart any longer. Can you walk? Yes, well, but... Then you let me worry about the cart. Thank you. Eliza, will you help me, please? So I told you, I'll worry about it. And now, Eliza, if you'll help me get my part, please. Brother Chislett, this is going to be a very long journey if we have to go back to get each cart. Oh, I'm sure we'll find help along the way. Family. I want to ride in the cart. Not today. The hill is too steep, and it's all Mom and Brother can do to carry just one person up it. But I'm cold, and I'm tired, and my feet hurt, and I'm hungry, and... What if I carry you up the hill? Will that help? Is that better? All right, now your feet won't hurt anymore. Well, Dill, you and Yance Jr. are going on, on up ahead. We'll be right behind you. All right, come on, Yance. I want to win the cart. If you come with me, you can carry my dolly. She needs someone strong and brave to carry her. I'm strong. I cannot and I will not allow my wife to haul a lug such as myself. Oh. Up this never-ending yes. hill. And you stubborn, Dane. You are the one with frozen feet, yeah. mine or not. I know, Elsie, but how can you no. pull me up this hill? I don't want to hear another word. Do you understand? I, yes, Elsie, I do, but there is no No. Possible. Now, Jens, just get in the cart and sit still and think light thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Elsie. For you, I... I will think light thoughts, why? Yeah. I'll be light. I'll be light as a feather. Yeah. Yeah, yes. How long has he been like this? He hasn't moved in about ten minutes or so. All right. Keep him as warm as you can. I've got to get these people up to the camp. Then I'll send someone back for you. Uh, I'm scared, Brother Chislett. Reuben, I promise you that the Holy Ghost will protect you tonight, and you will yet make it to the valley. I want you to remember that promise. I'll be back for you and your father. I promise you that too. I'll keep you warm, and don't sit down. Keep moving so that you don't freeze up. All right, I'll be waiting, and, and I won't sit down. And should I say a prayer? Yes. Pray that the Lord will protect you tonight from the elements and that he will give you strength. Many of the saints struggled through the night to make it to camp. All knew, or would later realize, that help was being given them beyond their own natural abilities. All sensed in time that the falling snow was not the only thing coming from heaven, but that God was sending down help in many ways. Even angels of heaven were being sent to lighten our loads. Angels, Grandpa? Angels, Jenny. The prophet Joseph taught that there are no angels who minister to this earth, 
but those who belong to it or have belonged to it. No doubt, Jenny, some of those same angels we felt on that trail that night were some of the same people who had died on the trail and were being sent to lighten our loads. Our Father in heaven, we gather this day to dedicate this ground as a resting place for our 13 brothers and sisters who lie here. And Father, please bless these dear souls, little Jens Jr. and Sister Bodil Mortensen, young James Kirkwood who died saving his brother's life by carrying him up the rocky ridge. And brother William James, whose young son stayed with him all through that terrible night. Father, watch over this ground. Protect it from the elements, that it might be holy unto thee. And please bless all of us who mourn until we are together again. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The day we entered the valley, Sunday, 30th of November, 1856. What a glorious sight. Many of us shed tears that day. They're here, the handcart people, they're here. Where, I don't see them. Down, turning the corner by the Smith house. Yes, yes, they're here. As soon as the meeting is dismissed, I want the brethren and sisters to repair to their homes. The afternoon meeting will be omitted for I wish the sisters to prepare to give those who have just arrived a mouthful of something to eat and to wash them and nurse them. Some you will find with their feet frozen to their ankles, some are frozen to their knees, and some have their hands frosted. We want you to receive them as your own children and to have the same feeling for them. Welcome home, sister. Have you seen my Bodil? Have you seen my Bodil? Yes. You have Brother Mortensen. We knew your little daughter. <laughs>